You're taking a walk at 3 a.m. like Kaya over here, and you take a bite out of your midnight snack. Suddenly, your throat swells up. You look at the packaging, and there it is. It's a Milky Way. You're allergic to chocolate. Damn you, Milky Way! Wow, Kyle, you look like a Mexican bullfrog. Good thing I have this EpiPen with me to save you from imminent death. You're right, damn it, Milky Way. Let's take revenge and replace it with other galaxies. In fact, there are typically three main types, spiral, elliptical, and irregular. But there are over one trillion galaxies in the universe with even more beautiful shapes and sizes. The thing is, they can be just as deadly as they are beautiful and can change Earth in many ways, as well as the sun. Much like our closest neighbor, Andromeda. It's over two times brighter and two times larger than the Milky Way's 100,000 light year diameter. Both of them are spiral galaxies due to their spiral arms, along with a fantastic disk and uh, bulge. That's right, Kyle, the official names for galaxy central areas around their supermassive black holes is called a bulge. Here, though, in Andromeda, you would see the entire night sky packed with stars from Earth, glowing brighter than you've ever seen. At first, not much changes for us on Earth. The sun still moves around the Andromeda galaxy at roughly the same speed as the Milky Way, which means the stars in the night sky shouldn't change too much in terms of their constellations. You see, stars orbit the center of galaxies at the same speed no matter how far away they are from the middle, which just so happens to be where supermassive black holes live, which all galaxies have. Wait, why? Oh, dark matter. As with the black holes, all galaxies have these invisible halos that hold them together like glue, and it does exert force on everything else inside. So, like I said, nothing really changes at first for Earth, but there is one thing that does change. Our galactic year would probably double, and also, because Andromeda has so many stars, it also means that more stars would be dying by going supernova. The result of that? You guessed it, Earth has a higher chance of being bombarded with gas and radiation. You know, instant death if that were to happen, like you're used to on this channel, Kyle. But hey, at least you have two times the stars to look at as your body and face melt and boil into a puddle of goo. And if you think those stars of Andromeda were already bright, wait until you see the galactic core of W22460526. Yes, that's the name. This is the brightest galaxy ever discovered with a luminosity or brightness 3.5 times 10 to the 14 that of the sun compared to the Andromeda galaxy, which was only 2.6 times 10 to the 10. Basically, it's hella bright, but it's also a weird distorted elliptical mangled ass structure. It's also what we call ultra luminous which is the brightest of the bright, unlike your intelligence. I'm just kidding, Kyle. This is just a medium-sized monster at 150,000 light years across, and yet is a galaxy of pure horror. It's not just one supermassive black hole, only 4 million times the mass of the sun like the Milky Way. No, no, no. This galaxy is powered by a 10 million solar mass voracious supermassive black hole devouring matter from three neighboring galaxies. And when a supermassive black hole eats this fast, it forms something called an active galactic nucleus, or AGN, which is not only my Call of Duty plan tag, but it's also the black hole that is actively eating and accreting everything around it. In fact, it becomes so bright and violent that it outshines the entire rest of the galaxy. Basically, all the gas and dust spiraling into the black hole gets superheated, glows like a nuclear engine, and then blasts colossal amounts of energy, X-ray, UV, gamma, in all directions. Just like explosive diarrhea. Oh, don't act like you've never had that before, Kyle. I know what your diet is like. Always those damn Cheetos and gas station sushi. Anyway, if Earth were to be in this galaxy, it would be absolutely terrifying. Your sky would no longer be merely star-filled. It'd be blindingly bright, and you'd probably have no night with all of those stars around. And if you did, you'd need day vision goggles just to look at the moon. Although I guess we can call them sunglasses. But the dust clouds heated by the galactic core turn your surroundings into a massive oven. Radiation levels will spike dramatically, intense X-rays and gamma rays spread across thousands of light years, Earth's oceans evaporate rapidly, atmospheres ignite, planetary surfaces melt to lava from the sheer magnitude of that radiation and gravitational chaos from three merging galaxies that tear our solar system apart. Orbital stability for the sun non-existent. Your planet is promptly shredded by tidal forces. That's gravity trying to tear things apart. And that radiation, by the way, it's 10,000 times more powerful than the Milky Way. Now you think, well, what if we orbited further away from the AGN? Doesn't matter, the Earth would still be obliterated by this hot, dust-obscured galaxy, otherwise known as a hot dog. Yes, that still means you die, and yes, hot dog was the official term. Any more questions, Kyle?
You want to get a hot dog? Sure, but not before you do a cartwheel. Come on, do it. There we go, good boy. I needed that segue to talk about our next galaxy, the Cartwheel Galaxy. This galaxy is 150,000 light years wide, or as wide as the viewers who are not currently subscribed. Just kidding, guys, but you better subscribe. Yes, this galaxy is suffering from being as wide as me during the time I let myself go, but it's also had another galaxy smash into it a few million years ago, which has left a hole. Yes, Kyle, like the wedding ring my ex-wife threw away at our cruise holiday, this galaxy is ring-shaped. From Earth, you'd most likely see a beautiful skyline at night because it's so dense in the outer ring and filled with new blue supergiant star formation. That and the central region around its black hole is now a starburst region with 10 to 20 times more forming than the Milky Way. You see, the Milky Way forms about 1 to 3 solar masses a year, which is the amount of gas that gets born as new stars total. That's right, only. Andromeda, maybe 3 to 5. But in fact, there can be entire galaxies that have up to almost 1,000 solar masses a year known as starbursts. But that's not this place, because as the ring shockwave continues to expand, it reaches your solar system, unleashing waves of gravitational disturbance, compressing interstellar gas, and igniting star formation right next to your planet. That may or may not be bad, but it's not good. Massive stars born in the ring die quickly as supernovas, making black holes and neutron stars, and each explosion potentially sends lethal gamma ray bursts towards Earth. But we've had that before with Andromeda, right? No, this time it's different. In a starburst galaxy or region, an insane amount of supernova means way more chances for X-rays coming to hit Earth. And it doesn't end there. This radiation also happens when those same dead stars after the supernova eat other alive stars and generate outrageous radiation from their accretion disks. You know, hopefully not near Earth or it would strip you down to bare atoms. But that's what happens when Earth is in a galaxy that has already collided before. What if we were in a galaxy that is in the middle of colliding with another one? Introducing the antenna galaxies, two massive spiral galaxies that are colliding head-on in an irregular clump shape. Immediately, Earth's sky would fill up with up to 400 billion stars, all located in a very small space, and gas ripped from their original orbits, forming enormous tidal streams visible from the ground. A huge galaxy 500,000 light years wide with 30 to 50 solar masses star formation rate per year? Beautiful. Until you realize the solar system is now navigating a gravitational minefield. Two galactic cores fling stars all over the place, and even though the chances of collision are almost zero, it can happen just like this. Or you could just see many stars moving and flying around, leaving the galaxy. There's also a chance that, as new stars find new orbits and brightness increases dramatically for the Earth, there could be some extreme climate instability. You know, overwhelming heat, agricultural death, and a lot of despair. Oh, and if any gravitational encounters with the sun happened, there'd be a chance of bombardments from comets and asteroids flying into your path from the Oort cloud that not even Jupiter can vacuum away. And if that doesn't happen, cosmic rays and gamma radiation continuously sterilize your planet from the massive amount of dying stars. But don't worry, Kyle, the most extreme and beautiful galaxies are last. Just like this next one. What's that? Yes, we're still on Earth, but it's pitch black. What happened? Well, apparently we are in a galaxy called Dragonfly 44. This is an ultra-diffuse galaxy where there are only around 100 million stars and zero solar masses forming a year, the opposite of a starburst. Yet Dragonfly 44 weighs 1 trillion solar masses, the same as the Milky Way. So that means 99% of this galaxy is composed almost entirely of dark matter. That's why Earth's sky is empty. It literally emits only 1% of the light that we're used to seeing. Starlight is rare and faint which means all the animals that use this to navigate, including humans, would never have successfully evolved. The Vikings wouldn't have reached new worlds, and humans would have never discovered the world overall as easily. The sextant, the tool used to navigate by the stars, literally no reason to invent it. And no, we won't make jokes about its name. We're above that on this channel. Yes, orbiting in Dragonfly 44 could be quite intense. With all that dark matter, which is stuff that doesn't really interact with regular matter, who the hell knows what could happen? Not only with unknown interactions as it enters the solar system and the planets, but also with the gravitational impact on the sun's orbit. Essentially, take your mind to the darkest thing you could possibly imagine, but in this galaxy there'd be a gravitational web of invisible matter with no stars, no astronomy, no other places to explore, no reason to exist. 
nihilism at its finest. You'd still see the moon though. On the other hand, that's probably better than having the sun and the earth be in a galaxy opening one of the largest known black holes in the universe, Ton 618. It's a quasar like W22460524, and this is something that has an active galactic nucleus, where the entire galaxy is basically the black hole's accretion disk, and in comparison to Phoenix A, that black hole looks like a Beyblade. So, Tonnenzintla 618, and yes, that's its full name, house the galaxy and is the galaxy. Kind of. But hey, imagine living in an opaque wasteland where you can't even see outside the solar system thanks to what would seem like an infinite amount of dust and gas from star corpses or stars being drained alive. And at the center of this dust field is a 66 billion solar mass black hole eating and accreting and shredding and devouring. This beastly galaxy has probably hundreds of billions of stars, yet we can't even see within because the quasar itself, Ton 618, outshines everything in it combined. Star formation? Probably greatly suppressed. This galaxy emits every kind of radiation that you can imagine and has relativistic jets going 99.9% .9 the speed of light shooting out of it. Tons gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet rays and every other kind of ray would obliterate atmospheres, boil oceans, vaporize any organisms. And thanks to the ridiculously powerful gravitational influence of the quasar, planets would be shredded and destroyed. From Earth it would seem like an alternate dimension in slow motion. Everything you've ever seen is ripped apart atom by atom as you spiral into becoming immortalized. You know, as part of Ton 618's central engine of death. And if that didn't happen, Earth would be nothing but a glowing molten rock while the sun is also helpless, until he too is enjoyed by the black hole equivalent of Lord Sauron. <laughs> Whoa, what happened? Sorry, I got a bit too excited about that one. Enough with all that violence. Let's replace our Milky Way with the most beautiful and incredible galaxy to live in. Phoenix A. Not just a galaxy, not just one of the largest galaxies, but the main galaxy in the middle of the brightest galactic cluster in the known universe. See, Phoenix A lives at the heart of the Phoenix Cluster, a gigantic collection of galaxies bound by gravity swimming in hot plasma and leaking x-rays like he's constantly cooking a meal. This galaxy, it's not just forming stars. It forms maybe over 700 solar masses per year. That's right. Remember how the Milky Way is doing like one? This thing is going absolutely wild. Maybe because it's not only a quasar, but also a ciphered galaxy. This is a galaxy that emits ridiculous amounts of infrared, a biohacker's wildest dream. It even holds one of the coolest things ever observed. And you'd get to see it from Earth. Gas from the middle of the cluster cools and rains down into the Phoenix A galaxy, feeding its massive black hole and triggering rapid star formation. Speaking of that black hole though, it's 100 billion solar masses, not 10 million, not even 66 billion like Ton 618, 100 billion. This isn't a galactic core, it's the devil's anus, almost 4,000 AU wide. It would take over 70 days at light speed to go around it. And if that wasn't enough for you on Earth, in a galactic cluster, not all the stars in the sky are from your galaxy, like in the Milky Way. In Phoenix A, the night sky is full of rogue stars flung from galaxies during mergers, drifting freely through space. And if that wasn't beautiful enough, you'd look up and see a cosmic city skyline of a few of the possible 42 known galaxies in the cluster, which sounds beautiful, and it is. Until you realize that half the buildings on Earth are exploding, the streets are flooded with x-rays, and the sun's probably about to get eaten by a black hole that could use a Milky Way supermassive black hole as a toothpick. Not to mention the hot falling gas, the hypernova, the gravitational slingshots, the flying comets, and the fact that the galaxies are still merging. So yeah, beautiful, but you're still going to die. Oh, from what? Well, literally everything. But we actually did forget one important galaxy, Kyle. One that existed only 280 million years after the Big Bang. Yes, this is the earliest galaxy that ever formed in the universe that we have ever discovered. But you know what's even cooler? Finding out what happens after the universe ends. <laughs>